Some say this episode is a croc. I say it's a gator. Killer alligator movies on this episode of Attack of the Killer Podcast. Attention planet Earth and beyond. Stay tuned for Attack of the Killer Podcast. It's time to put on your shirts with the little alligators on them and slide on your alligator boots. It's time for another episode of Attack of the Killer Podcast. I am your host, Insane Mike, and this is episode 219 that we call For the Gator Good. (laughs) What does that mean? Well, here at Attack of the Killer Podcast, we are a horror movie podcast. We're a group of friends, we get together, we pick a topic, we discuss movies within that topic, which happens to be movies with killer alligators in it this time. Now, if you are a first-time listener to the show and like what you hear, you can get even more. You can become an elite member of people in our society. No, not the Illuminati. Talking about something way cooler than that. That's right, you can become an attacker. Attackers are fans of the show who get all kinds of extra perks that no near mortal human could receive. You can get your very own certificate and membership card, bonus episodes, special videos, Mikey's Monsters, and so much more. How do you become an attacker? By going to jointheattackers.com and sign up for the level you want to be and get the perks that you want. So go to join the attackers.com that's that's j o i n t h e a t t a c k e r s dot com see i'm just thinking people may you're missing the s it's is join it, the attackers is it dot com dot dot k o m it k u m thank you okay and become uh, an attacker today so now it's time boys and girls, to introduce you to the podcast crew. He got lost in the swamp and asked an alligator for directions because he thought he would be a good navigator. Tad, everybody. (laughs) Hey, guys. uh, Thanks for the intro. You're welcome. He had heard that alligators grow up to 22 feet, but all the ones he's seen only have four. Jason. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Hey everybody! Thanks for listening. He had a run-in with a rare, be- a rare breed of alligators that only eat butts. They're called tailgators. Andy, everybody! Wow, wow! I think I'd rather be eaten by a fucking alligator. But thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and our very, very special guest from the Backlot Six Hundred Five podcast, Casey Keller- Kelderman. Hey guys! Thank you for having me on. Thanks for being on, man. Welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your podcast? Yeah, so I am uh, one of the co-hosts of the Backlot 605 podcast. Uh, We're based in in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, I am also one of the co-hosts of the Killer Countdown podcast on our our podcast network. That is our horror-themed podcast. Uh, That is where we rank some of the best horror movies um, of all time and and in different subgenres of horror uh, one one episode that we should we should plug out here is an episode that Tad and Jason were on talking about horror the best horror scores of all time, which was hard to do when you only have eight picks. But uh, they, they definitely left quite quite the list on the show. But yeah, that's that's uh, Backlot Six Hundred Five, and uh, yeah, we we put out a weekly weekly podcast every week, and the Killer Countdown is every month. And yeah, thank you guys again for having me on. I'm excited to talk some some Gators. Yeah. Well, thanks for being on, man. And Jason, yeah. in your eight, please tell me you had Neon Maniacs. With no. Neon Maniacs score. No. no. Right at number I'm, one. Should yeah. have been. Better have been. You should listen to that episode and find out. Not if Neon Maniacs isn't going to be on there. Oh, well, <laughs> you never know unless you fucking listen. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> but first, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Shutter. Shutter, it slices, it dices, it cuts tin <laughs> cans. But most importantly, it's the best streaming resource for horror movies, shows, and original content. Shutter brought Joe Bob back to television. 
And it's also now bringing back Holliston to TV. Make sure you watch Holliston over yes. and over and over again. Because I want a new season. Do it just for me. If you are a fan of this show and you're not watching Shudder, you are doing yourself a huge disservice. Go go and sign up for Shudder today. And I promise it's totally worth it. You have Jason's guarantee. It's true. However, if you're still not sure, sign up for a free month trial on us here at Attack of the Killer Podcast. Now, if you enter our promo code AOTKP, you can get a month of free of Shudder for free. Be warned, once you start, you cannot stop. So Shudder, it's kind of like the Pringles of horror stream horror movie streaming service. Well, technically you can. I don't want to let, you know, have people think that you can't um, cancel after your free subscription you will not be charged if you don't want to you can opt out at any time yeah I guess I should have said you don't want to stop so again that promo code is AOTKP now have you ever wondered what the gang here at Attack of the Killer podcast watch when they're not watching movies for the show nope now you can <laughs> <laughs> now you can find out with Tad and what we watched all right let's jump right into it jason what have you watched oh my gosh guys Uh, i'm afraid to say this but uh i haven't watched one movie it's football season since hey but i can tell you what i did there is something i did watch on netflix there's a new show called ratchet ratchet did you okay go on um, it's, uh, it's an ad- adaptation from one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Um, it's produced by Ryan Murphy. It's starring Sher- Sarah Paulson. No way. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty great. I couldn't make it past the first episode. No, it just hadn't comp- It just doesn't have hold on to me. It kind of was a little, a little slow. First episode. I may go back to it. Does Paulson play like the nasty ratchet bitch? There's ratchet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Yes. But yet she's endearing in a way. Oh yeah. You know, there she's, you, you see her purpose for it and it's pretty cool. Um, I, I just personally have a hard time with like one of my least favorite things in the world is the thought of, shock therapy and what's the one where they punch your brain out lobotomies, lobotomies. so those like <laughs> those two things I, I can't think of it <laughs> words heavyweight and, title uh, fight I... <laughs> lobotomies and shock therapy are like the saddest thing that's ever happened in human history to me to, to just the thought of these poor patients just having their lives taken away over stupid science and it's like stupid it's like incredibly it's... depressing to me to watch it happen to anyone on screen and it's just sadly there's a bunch of it in this there so. and you should check out schindler's list it's way oh, more fuck. uplifting oh man <laughs> you shush that's it that's it guys uh yes football season fantasy football I love it. sorry all right uh, i guess we'll jump over to mike what have you watched Man, it's so weird that I have a bigger list than Jason. It could happen. It's not, and I don't really have that big of a list, to be honest. I felt like I was kind of slack, and I felt like the last episode I was doing so much better. I watched so much stuff, yep. and then I kind of fell back into my you know, well of nothingness. But um, Brandy's been on this kick of watching all of the Into the Dark movies on Hulu, but watching yeah. them in order. Uh-huh. And so I've been trying to watch with her to kind of catch ones I haven't seen before. The only one that I've I've made it all the way through so far is um, they come knock they come knocking, which I think was from the first season. Yeah. Um. And and <laughs> I didn't like it. I didn't like it, <laughs> and that's what kind of made me fall off the train the first time trying to watch all these movies. I I lost interest right away after watching. Paluka, I could not get into Paluka. Um, was that wasn't that the name Puka. of Puka? Puka, Puka. Um, and then this one, <laughs> you like watched two of the worst ones. <laughs> I know. I've seen really, really good ones. Um, 
that I really like. I still, the body is still my all time favorite, but I've seen some other ones like the pilgrim I thought was, was fun. Yeah. Um, but this one, this one just didn't even make any goddamn sense. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, no, no, thank you. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm kind of like, it's just, it's dragging my feet to get to watch them every time I hit a brick wall with these. And I appreciate that I, the concept of all this, but maybe some of these lesser ones that don't connect with me would work better. If it, if this is like an anthology series, if they did it more in like, you know, 45 minute or hour episodes instead of full feature length films, maybe that's where ones like this one would work better, but more like a masters of horror. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, then I also watched, uh, the other first time watch, um, you know, not horror, but you know, love me some Pixar. So I watched the, the latest one onward, which, um, had no, it? had no idea what it was going into it. Right. And I really, really liked it. Um, um, cause the concept was cool and my son obviously loved it. Cause basically it's, it's like if the world of dungeons and dragons was real a long time ago and and things didn't evolve past those char- creatures and characters and concepts. The only thing that did evolve was technology over magic. And so magic. So it's like current day in this world of of trolls and elves and whatnot. Um, only magic isn't real anymore, and technology's taken over. So you know, instead of you know, music, magic, flying spells, they're driving SUVs and, sh- and stuff like that. So it's fun. Uh, it feels a little stunt casty because you got both uh, Spider Man and Captain America as the two leads, two lead voices in the in the movie. Mm. Um, but, you know, I'll listen to them or watch them any day anyway. I love both those guys. So, yeah, it's definitely a good one. Um, that's all I watched for new. I did get a chance to go back and revisit us and got to watch it with, with Brandy. Uh, I wouldn't say it was her first time watching it, but it was the first time watching it all the way through awake. So, um, (laughs) and it was great because I love watching that movie with anybody who hasn't watched it before and, um, pick their brain and what they think the, what they think is really going on in that movie. I think, I feel like there's a lot of fun discussions and interpretations that can happen with that with that particular one and then also we watched captain marvel uh so watch that again for Ooh. the second time i think now so and that's all i watched all right casey what have you watched recently yeah uh i've been preparing a lot for an upcoming episode uh, it'll be out by the time this episode drops at the killer countdown where we're ranking the the 20 best Horror movies of the 1980s, so that's, the greatest decade whoa. of all. Horror. That's tough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually it's going to be our, our final episode of that show, so we're going out with a, a bang on that. So I've been trying to catch up on on, on some of the the big ones that I've not seen yet. Um, so I, I did a double feature of Night of the Creeps, followed by The Blob, nice, which is a, a great double feature to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. The, both of those fantastic films. Um, I think I like The Blob more than I did Night of the Creeps. Uh, but Tom Atkins in Night of the Creeps is he's 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 fucking Tom Atkins, man. Yeah, that's uh, right. The Thrill Blob is, yeah, the Blob is 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 one of those movies where if if it cut off the last thirty seconds of that movie, it, it's one of the best of the decade for me. Then, but that last thirty seconds where they tease a, a sequel, just that never pays off for, for them. Kind of, kind of ends on a sour note for me. Um, some of the other ones I watched for the first time: uh, Slumber Party Massacre Two. Wow! I was not a fan of the first one, but I, I have always heard that the sequel is much better. And and damn straight, it's much better. Uh, <laughs> I was not expecting a you know a musical number like throughout the movie. Uh, it's fucking awesome. Uh, one of the most inventive weapons in, in all of horror, the guitar with the, the drill on the end. It's, 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 a, it's beautiful. Uh, I also watched Cannibal Ferox. Uh, nice. That was, yeah, it took me three days to watch, but it felt <laughs> like a rite of passage where I like, I need, I need to just sit down and, and finish this movie. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's like can, uh, Cannibal Holoca- Holocaust for me. I, I can't recommend it. But it's one of yeah. those movies. If you want to go into that subgenre of horror, 
like that's where we definitely should should start out and and one of those movies to check off your list um and then the last new watch that i really had um was i watched fright night for the first time oh i had never seen it before uh and the thing that I took away from it is something I, I never hear anyone else talk about. Everybody talks about uh, Chris Sarandon in the movie. Roddy McDowell fucking rules in Fright Night. Yeah, yeah. he does. Yeah. He, I would watch a whole movie with, with his character as just, just this vampire slang uh, horror host. Like that, That's my shit right there. And yeah, I wish more people talked about him in that movie. I think he's fantastic in it. Uh, yeah. And and I obviously Chris Rand and that people talk about him for for a reason, but goddamn Roddy McDowell is so good in that movie. <laughs> well, if you want more, you need to see Fright Night too. If you want more Roddy McDowell, yeah, I, I've been. Yeah. Ch- uh, one of my buddies is is he rides hard for Fright Night too, even over the the first one, and it's it's a little hard to find. So I'm gonna have to. It is, yeah. Try to find it somewhere yet. Um, but yeah, that's all I had for for new watches from the '80s. Um, I also checked out the babysitter killer queen on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was very pessimistic going into this one because of some of the marketing and who was marketed to not be in this movie. Um, I was just pleasantly surprised by everybody that returned. That's what I'll say about that. I think it's just as good as the first movie. Me too. It's a, it's a fun 90 minute ride has some great, gore in it. Uh, I think the characters are all really fun to hang out with. And, you know, it's it's not like a classic by any means, but if you want to ha- have a, just a fun 90 minute slasher film here in, in October, like this is definitely one to throw on. And then uh, we threw on, uh, I hadn't watched these since I was a kid. We threw on Halloween Town and Halloween Town 2 on Disney Plus a few <laughs> weeks ago. Uh, I, I grew up with these movies. Do they hold up? Probably not. But uh, I, I, I still freaking love these movies. Uh, they put me in the Halloween mood for sure. Yeah. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised how much the second one actually held up pretty well. Uh, because the first one, for me, the costumes are really hokey when they get to Halloween Town. It's just people wearing normal shirts and then they have a pumpkin head on. It just looks really dumb. <laughs> uh, but the production value of, of, of Halloween Town 2 really, really... Uh, increases in those few years between them. Uh, there's a, a shot in the movie where the mom puts on a mask, and when it turns, you know, midnight on Halloween, all the math people wearing masks, you turn into that monster. This mom just turns into this like green goblin type creature, and it's really, really creepy for a Disney Channel original movie. Yeah, the mom is such a fucking buzzkill in the whole series. Yeah, she is. I, I, I but I, I, I do wish uh, Debbie Reynolds was my grandma. Yeah, me too. That's who I, w- I would want to hang out with every Halloween. Uh, the last w- couple that I have here, uh, I rewatched, so- rewatched Society for this upcoming show. Uh, Society is, is easily one of my favorite 80s movies. Uh, I think it's just a, a, a perfect satire, uh, a perfect just gross out, nasty horror movie. Uh, the shunting is maybe the greatest thing that's ever been put on screen. <laughs> yeah. Society like the, it, it's, it's like if Jordan Peele and David Cronenberg fucked and made a movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So society, society fucking rules. Uh, the last thing I watched, I picked up the arrow children of the corn Blu-ray yeah. because I had just finished visiting some of the uh, locations from Children of the Corn. I live about an hour away. Uh, and the first thing I actually popped on on this Blu-ray was the Return to Gatlin documentary. Oh, I, hear, I hear that's pretty good. I heard yeah, that's it, was, it, was, it was pretty good. Um, I, I think I know the guys who made that. <laughs> and so when I saw those names pop up on screen, I was like, oh, shit, I know them. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that was the first thing I popped on because we had visited a, a few weeks ago, and yeah, guys, that was a fantastic little documentary, and uh, I, I I I love seeing you. shit from Iowa pop up on screen like this. I wish well, I wish more people would go check out uh, uh, you know Whitty I what is it Whitty Whitney Iowa uh, is where it's at. It's just by Sioux City, Iowa. I wish more people would go hang out there and 
take pictures and you know with the the flagpole like that is the the coolest thing ever to me just to go visit right that. yeah just a big old flagpole in the middle yeah. of the street yeah so i i cheesed out when i when i went there and then when i popped on the documentary i cheesed out as well so but yeah that's all i uh watched recently well you have like the ultimate list that was a hell of a list of great things to see for the first time and yeah, yeah. I need to have you on my podcast now that you've, we could knock out seven episodes. <laughs> <laughs> At least. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for that eighties um, episode to see where you guys rank them. I do not, uh, I, I, I uh, do not know what the hell I, I would even do. I mean, no that is, uh-uh. I mean, the score uh-huh. one was hard enough, but doing eighties horror. <laughs> yeah. I'd, no, that's that's like, no, I could narrow it down that. to a hundred. That's like trying to pick a favorite child. You yeah, know. I have 50 on my list alone, and I have to do it with three other guys to get 20. So I don't know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> wow. I definitely will be checking that one out for sure. That's exciting. And I'm sad to see it go, but I'm um, going out with a bang. So that's good. Absolutely. OK, Andy, what have you watched? Uh, well, I've been viewing the Mile High Horror Film Festival out of uh, Denver and um I've only seen uh, two of the movies because I've been kind of been powering through the shorts and they're really great too, but I'll just focus on the movies right now. Uh, The ones that I've watched, the first one is called Alone and it's kind of like uh, equal parts duel with uh, surviving the game. You guys remember those films? Uh, You've obviously remembered duel, but yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, but basically it's this girl she's moving out of the city and she's you know hauling a u-haul and this guy like in a jeep you know uh grand cherokee just keeps you know you know fucking with her on the road and he keeps following her and he'll introduce himself and then he'll apologize you know it's like yeah sorry about the other road i was texting and blah 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 whatnot and Eventually, um, it gets to the point where he runs her off the road and kidnaps her and um uh puts her in this in this cabin and he basically gets a lot of information out of her you know like really emotional stuff cuz she's cuz she's scared and whatnot and she she eventually uh escapes from the uh cabin and he st- and he starts to and he starts to hunt her down but he uses said information about her personal life to mess with her while he's trying to hunt her down and that's that's all that's all i'll leave it at that and it's just it's very it's very simplistic you know in its plot and it's it, but it's it's shot really well and it's and she get she gains the upper hand uh psychologically like she's been trying to do like he's been trying to do to her uh you know most most of the film and yeah it's it's really good i i really recommend it um, the next one that I watched is a movie called Fried Berry. Have you guys heard of this one yet? I know Tad has. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I love the trailer. Um, I spilled the beans on this on Facebook a little bit, but uh, yeah, I really, really, really liked this movie. Uh, first of all, I gotta say it's freaking hilarious. Uh. Just some of the stuff that happens, but basically the the plot is there's this guy. Obviously, his name's Barry, and as far as I can tell, I think it's uh, Johannesburg, South Africa, is is where it's set. And he's a heroin addict, and he's kind of a he's well, for lack of a better term, he's he's kind of a piece of shit. He's 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 just he's he's a dirt bag. And after coming home from like his this buddy's house, you know and shooting heroin when he's been avoiding his wife and kid at home, he gets abducted by aliens. And then there's an alien being put back into his body. And essentially um, he's, he has, he's just very naive as to what's going around, you know? So he's kind of like, I I said this, it's kind of like fear and loathing in Las Vegas meets Starman. Because he's walking around like the red light district and just like the the ghettos of St. Johannesburg. And it's, it is basically, he's indulging in all they have to offer. I mean, he's like doing ecstasy and going to clubs and dancing like in the funniest goddamn way. 
Um, you know, he's, I mean, and this man is not very good looking like at all. And I think that's the reason why, and women just seem to be like drawn to him now. So he's like doing a bunch of prostitutes and all this and that, but here, here's, here's where it gets weird. Him being an alien actually makes him be a better human being because I'll, I'll spoil a little bit for you. There's a guy that's having a heart attack on the ground and he places his hand on him and he stops the guy from having a heart attack. And he helps like he helps kids and just, and it's all inadvertent. And there's a, there's a scene where he gets a chick pregnant because it's, you know, it's this hooker that he, that well picks him up because he doesn't really even say anything, but it's just like, it's all these just crazy misadventures, you know, combined into this really weird alien story. And it's, it's, it's really, it's a hell of a lot of fun and it helps that it's actually really hilarious. So guys go, go out and watch it. Just do do yourself a favor and watch this movie. At least give it at least give it a shot because it's just it's hilarious. Um other things that I watched, um thanks to a the HBO pass for Jason, thank you. I I I finally ended up watching Birds of Prey uh with the wife and I ended up watching uh Dark Phoenix. Uh I don't understand why uh dark venus gets a lot of hate um it was fine yeah yeah i mean it wasn't as good as uh some of the other x-men movies but i thought it was i thought it was okay i didn't you know i don't understand why everybody's hating on it um birds of prey i had a few problems with i just um I won't, I won't get into them, but I mean, I didn't hate it, but I'm, I have no desire to ever watch it again. Um, I turned it off. Damn. Uh, I saw it in theaters and fucking loved it. I thought it was great too. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't say I hated it. Um, oh yeah. I just, I, I saw problems I, I with it. I'm a crazy one. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Too many, w- too many women, too much women fighting. <laughs> Um, no, it wasn't that. But <laughs> I don't. I don't care when women. Yeah, try to stir the pot, men, yeah. men fight. Um, I don't. You know. I don't care. Um, let's see. Damn it! You threw me off. Uh, <laughs> the I of course been watching. Uh, and thankfully they come out every Friday because I'd be I'd be done with the goddamn series by now. Which uh, of course I watched the boys on Amazon Prime. And I watched the first episode of Lovecraft Country, and I am fucking hooked. Oh yeah! That's, oh my god! That first episode, I'm just like, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm yeah. in this for the goddamn long run. This is a great show. They did a great job of establishing characters. I looked over at my wife, like in the middle of the damn, um, in the middle of the damn first episode. I was just like, honey, if anybody anything happens to these people, I'm gonna be <laughs> pissed. I mean, it's like. They they established them so well, and the you, they made you just really care about them from the get go. And um, yeah, Love Calf Country and what you know, all that other stuff I just said. That's what I watched. Chad, what awesome. have you watched? I was gonna say, someone asked me. Um, not a whole lot. I might have a shorter list than you. Let's see. I I almost forgot about one until Andy mentioned um, film festival, but I. Watched, I rewatched something I've probably seen almost the most times outside of John Carpenter's Halloween. I watched um, Trick or Treat for an upcoming podcast. Mm. Not not my podcast, but another uh, prescribed films podcast. Um, another PFPN podcast. So that mm-hmm. one, absolutely love. I could talk about that for hours, but I won't because we've all seen it and we all know how I feel about it. And um the only other movie I watched for the first time was The Stylist, which was oh, good. I was hoping you're gonna talk. Yeah, about it. I think it was playing Fantastic Fest, and it was online. And um, our friend Jill, Jill Six, uh, I don't know how to pronounce her actual last name, but um, she, it's her feature debut. She did a short called The Stylist uh, years ago, and did a great campaign and raised money and got 
a feature version filmed and it was fantastic. Uh, just really proud of her. And she had the Saturday night. It, it was a virtual film festival, but she had the Saturday night, like 8 PM slot, which is like prime time, big deal. There was only a small handful of features selected for this festival. And hers was one of them. Uh, it was gorgeous and well-written and a heartbreaking, but thrilling story. Uh, lots of great gore effects. Um, definitely some, you know, vibes of I, i'm not even going to mention other names because it, it stands on its own um i see a lot of people comparing it to other things but i'm just going to leave it be on its own it's about a hairstylist who is obviously dealing with some mental issues and some issues of um past trauma and uses that you know and and uh takes it out on some some clients and some people and um I won't spoil anything about it because you should just check it out when it's available, but it's fantastic. And I I'm just proud that, you know, I know her and she's been hustling for years and making some great shorts over the years that we've played at my film festival. And I know they've played at Halloween Palooza and she's been, you know, a staple of the genre festivals for years. And um, just really cool to see her do this big feature film that finally came out and, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's getting rave reviews and, I think there's big things in their future. So, you know, check out the stylist if you can. And Scary Gary's in it. Yeah, his eyebrows. Nice. I didn't know Scary <laughs> Gary was in it. Heck yeah. Awesome. Just just a small cameo as he's getting his hair cut. There's a really cool uh, cameo by Jill, too. I won't spoil, but it's really a killer uh, cameo. Awesome. And yeah, just really, really cool and um has some dark humor in it but most for the most part a deeply disturbing and um moody film and definitely uh yeah very dark and and like i said moody and ominous and very cool i highly recommend it and the the cinematography is gorgeous it's just so impressive to see her sort of grow up in front of us on on the screen you know watching mm. uh her evolve from these shorts into this feature and to get there and you know, just really cool. Cool. I I've got one more thing I want to want to bring up before we move on. Um, have you guys seen the trail? I'm so excited. I'm, have you guys seen the trailer for Freaky? No. Yes, uh -huh. with Vince Vaughn. Yes. Oh, it looks so good. I can't wait. So it's a it's a Blumhouse film. And cool. it, from the and, director of uh, Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to ooh. you. Yeah. So I love where this director's going with horror, where he's taking basically um, wacky uh, comedy plots and turning them into horror movies because this is totally <laughs> Freaky Friday. Yeah, it doesn't even try movie. to hide it. It doesn't even try to oh, hide it with the title, Freaky. Exactly. That's cool. So basically, Vince Vaughn is this slasher serial killer that ends up swapping bodies with one of the teenage girl oh, victims. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it looks freaking <laughs> awesome. It's like hot chick, but with a slasher. Damn. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah so it, looks it, looks, yeah it, looks, it looks really, really good. And I love his first two movies, so I'm so stoked on this. Me too. Me too. I just wanted to throw that out there. I think it hits in October thirteenth because that's a Friday the thirteenth or November thirteenth. One of the, one of the. I thought it was in October, but I, you, I don't know. It might be just October thirteenth and not Friday the thirteenth. But yeah. um, I also saw that Blumhouse's uh, the Craft remake is going straight to on demand um, next month. Oh, good. So good. we can check that out on. I think Amazon's getting it. It might be like rent you know, pay to rent, but yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, yes. Thank yeah, you. So that's Dad, what for, we watched. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks. Um, what's going on in the world of Twitter? Well, Jason's going to tell us, or at least the only parts of Twitter that matter to us, our weekly poll with poll position. From now on, like your parents were, you are the secret force of poll position. All right, so on this episode's poll position, the question was asked, what are your favorite water animal kill scene? Yeah, the, all these questions are hard to word <laughs> if you heard yeah. the bonus episode. Oh, my goodness. So, yes, an animal in the water kills something, somebody. What's your favorite scene, Mike? 
My favorite scene is from Piranha 3D, where Jerry O'Connell gets his wee wee bit off. Gosh dang it. You would say that. It's such a good one. It's his penis. <laughs> oh, that's what wee wee means. Um, I'm going to go next, and I, I can't not pick the classic. It's uh, Chrissy's Last Swim, that opening scene from Jaws. Very classic. I mean, it's been, it's like almost up there with the shower scene as being like For real. an overly um, imitated scene and satired scene. And uh, Yeah, I just iconic. watched it again right before we started recording, and it's just so impactful. And I can't imagine what the audience in 1975 would have thought to that movie, you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously. I'd imagine poop is, and pants. Yeah. And she's so scared in that scene, the way she's breathing and saying it hurts and all oh, the mm-hmm. score, obviously. And then she just goes under and then that's it. And it's quiet. And oh, fuck, it's so good. So good that Steven Spielberg himself <laughs> did his own parody of that scene in 1941 at the beginning of 1941, which I think it was the same actress. That's awesome. I haven't seen that movie forever. All right. And then we got uh, Tad. Tad's up next. Okay, I've got your winner here. Um, oh, come on. Just saying, I've been sweeping the Twitter polls. And, sure have, uh, damn it. <laughs> this is this is a great answer, so it's I, I'm expecting another repeat this week, but I'm going with Shark versus Zombie from Zombie 2. I mean, <laughs> how could you not pick that? It's a fucking shark versus zombie. I don't even have to explain <laughs> it. It's a fucking shark versus a fucking zombie. There. Andy, you- next. You are only going to win because you said it before anyone else. Like as soon right, as you posted Mike it, was I was, yeah, I was pissed. First. I'm like, God damn it. it Should have been mine. <laughs> yes. Andy, what would your choice be? And it's got to be, got to be on the water, right? Yes. A water related animal kill scene. L- water related animal kill scene. Well, Okay. I got to go with uh, Deep Blue Sea when Samuel Jackson's all talking that shit and then the, the shark nice. just comes in and just grabs him. <laughs> that, that is, I mean, that is awesome. That That's probably my favorite. That's awesome. And so, yeah, Twitter only lets us have four spots, so that's why each of us get. But, Casey, what if you got to pick one, what's your favorite? Uh, it's, it's shark versus zombie. That's it. Uh, but if I had to pick one as a fifth option, I would just go with uh, Quint from Jaws. Oh man, that's oh, that's man. definitely that's definitely the most impactful uh, kill in that movie for me. And yeah, it's it's it's, it's you don't want to see this this guy who's kind of just this rap bastard, but you still love him die. But the just the way he goes out, it's 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 heart wrenching every time I watch that movie. And it's in broad daylight, so you're just mm-hmm. seeing it all and every chomp and oh yes. Um, yeah. um. All right. Well, yeah, those are all good guesses. Get your butts over there to Twitter at AOTKP and get those votes in. And that's pole position. And now it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's Insane Games. <laughs> That's right. It's time once again for Insane's Games. And this is a brand new game I came up with called Killer Road Trip. Trip, trip, trip. (laughs) This game is I'm going to give you the name of a movie and you have to name which state it takes place in. Oh, man. Hmm. I've always seen that picture come across my Facebook feed of the map of all that. And I'm like, I look at Iowa and then I move on. I'm like, I did the same thing. I should have paid more attention. And um, (laughs) these might be the same. I don't know. I didn't use the map. This is actually good. Yeah. 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 Uh, And just so everybody knows, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is not one of the movies Uh, because er everybody knows that takes place in Alaska. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So, and everybody will get a chance to guess. So, let's get started. So, um, we'll start with you, Jason. Not great. Our first movie is Psycho. What state does Psycho take place in? Uh, that is... You know, it's the one with the guy in I the know. dress, stabs a woman in the shower. Spoilers. Oh, shit. That is Massachusetts. I want to, I just because I want you to write that down. <laughs> so you spell that. I can't even say it. So his, Jason's pick was Massachusetts. Tad, what's yours? 
For Psycho, um, I'm going to say California. Andy? Uh, when I need to say that it's uh, Arizona. And Casey? Mm, I'm going to go with Oregon. Ta- or Andy, sorry. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Jeez, you just. <laughs> Andy was correct with Arizona. Good Dang, job. Did yeah, you know I, that or you just guessed? Yes, yes, I did, actually. Because nice. I've watched Psycho like a bunch of times and analyzed it. And yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, winner goes first on this next one Jeepers Creepers. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Hmm. I want to say, uh, let's go Indiana. Okay. Casey. Hmm. I think it's somewhere South. I'm going to go with Oklahoma. Oklahoma is the Jason. I wrote down Mississippi. That's spelled M I S S I S S S S S S S S P P I. Record scratching. Tad. The only creep I know lives in Nebraska, so I'm going with Nebraska. The correct answer. I mean, that movie's crazy, and a lot of crazy shit happens in it. So the only state that I know of that has a lot of crazy shit happen. Yes, the answer is Florida. Really? Yeah. Should have known. Okay. Next movie is Return of the Living Dead. Casey, you can go first. I'm going to go with Illinois. Jason? I was going to go with Illinois as well. Tad? Um, how about um, Georgia? Andy? Kentucky. Andy gets it again. It's Kentucky. <sighs> Nice. I didn't know we were supposed to pay attention to locations when we watch (laughs) movies. Okay, so I'm going to go with winner and goes first again. Next movie is Poltergeist. Andy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's California. Casey? Yeah, I I I think it's in California. Jason? Illinois. The S is silent. Oh. Tad? I'm going to go with California because that sounds like a good answer. The correct answer is California. Damn it. <laughs> Next movie uh, is Silence of the Lambs. Tad. Um, let's say that is in Oklahoma. Oh, Andy. Uh, I want to say Virginia. Casey? Yeah, I think it's up over on the East Coast. I'm going to go with um, Massachusetts. Jason? I thought it was D.C., but I wrote down Maryland because it's kind of the same. Jason is correct. It is Maryland. Hot dang. Or Maryland. Why why are you writing them down? Well, it seems fair, like, to me. I guess. Oh, because because he we, doesn't uh, want you <laughs> to think that I'm just taking that he's your looking answer. over over right. my um, laptop. Screen. I, I thought well, the way he says, I wrote down as if like he had the questions ahead of time, so I just was. Oh, yeah. oh uh-uh. not at all. So they're thinking you're cheating in a different way. Everybody thinks. I'm I mean, I mean, he'd be pretty awful if he's cheating and still right. losing. But <laughs> <laughs> right, I don't think I've ever won. So. <laughs> So you won that last round, Jason. Okay. You're, you can go first with Stepford Wives. Oh, well, I wrote down <laughs> North Carolina. Okay, Tad. Um, how about, I'm just trying to think of states in general. Um, right. <laughs> it takes one. place in Michigan, duh. Good try. <laughs> Andy. Oh, the Stepford Y. I can't remember. That sounds like a bunch of blue blood assholes. Uh, That's a message. I want to say like, like, well, yeah, like, or maybe like, I'm going to say like uh, Vermont. Yeah, that's a good one. 
Casey? I have no idea, so I'm going to say uh, where 95% of movies take place, California. Utah! <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Connecticut. Ah. Uh, yuppie East Coast. Connecticut. I'm just kidding for those blue listeners. Blue blue Connecticut. Blood apple. Connecticut. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> that's your punk band. Uh, let's see. Um, Tad, you can go first with this next one. Critters. Ooh. Um, oh, that's like a desert, maybe Arizona. No, uh, yeah, I'll go with that. That's fine. I'm gonna lose anyway. So, Jason, I wrote down Illinois. He can't get out of Illinois, apparently. Casey. Just ask again. Casey. I am going to go with Texas. Ooh, that's good. And Andy. That's Kansas, man. Oh, shit. Kansas. He's, he's right. It's Kansas. Damn him. Uh, he knows his states. It, well, we are all naming states, too. I'm hoping this one's <laughs> an easy one. Uh, Andy, you get to go first. The <sighs> Sixth Sense. Oh damn it! Um, see, I, I, I can't remember. Um, that's a thriller, not a horror. Oh snap! Oh, and he used the TV. <laughs> they get ten <laughs> points for Tad. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm t- this is really a stab in the dark for me. I'm, I'm gonna say Ohio. Oh, I O, <laughs> Tad. Wasn't that in? Uh, well, that was in Philly, right? I, was, I don't know. That's a town. That's a town. Yeah. And he's thinking of the name of the state <laughs> that Philly is just in. Give it, just give that to me. <laughs> Jason. How about Pennsylvania? And Casey. Yeah, I, I, I do believe it is in Pennsylvania. Yep, most of M. Night's <laughs> movies take place in Pennsylvania. Which uh, is where Philadelphia oh. is. Oh! Transylvania. Close. <laughs> Okay, two more. Um, so, Casey, we'll start with you. It follows. Hmm. Yet. Yeah. Um. It follows. I'm gonna go with Michigan. Jason. God dang! I wrote something else down, but now I'm like, if I don't say Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, and it is that. That would be pissed. But I'm going to go Florida. Okay, Tad. If it's fucking Illinois, I swear to God. Michigan. <laughs> Andy. I'm going to say Michigan as well. The Jeez. correct answer is Michigan. Oh, sh- Jason, uh, maybe you should listen to my podcast where I talk extensively about this. I did listen. I heard it. <laughs> Did I listen? I heard all the way through the end. <laughs> I know. You're probably the only one who has, so I'm just giving you a hard time. Okay. Okay, last one. Um, last one. We'll start with... Aunt, uh, no, who should we start with? Jason's, Jason's in the last. We'll start with him. Oh. The Shining. Are you fucking kidding me? You don't know? <laughs> well, I. but then I blanked out. Uh, uh, God damn. uh, Kentucky. Oh my God. Casey, uh, <laughs> Colorado, Andy, call a goddamn ratto. <laughs> call a fucking ratto. Um, no, it's pronounced Colorado. You potty mouthers. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's the correct answer is Colorado with six right answers, and he's apparently a sore winner. Andy <laughs> won that one. Screw you guys. <laughs> Tad and Casey tied in second with four, and that's I the end of yeah. uh, Insane's Games. <laughs> So that's Insane's Games, everybody. Uh, if you listeners, uh, you can also play with the home version <laughs> of the game. All you have to do is make one. Oh, that's cool. And now it is time, as the title of this episode is For the Gator Good, it's time we talk about some killer alligator movies. 
So, Jason, what is our first movie for this episode? Oh, man, guys, up first, this awesome movie from just the other day, 2019. (laughs) It's Crawl. The state of Florida has issued a Category 5 hurricane warning. All residents must evacuate immediately. Grab your families, your loved ones, and get out. Dad! We won't be able to come for you. Dad! Dad! Oh my God. What happened? on the pipes. Where's their senses? I can distract them for you. You got this! You need to go now. I'm not leaving you here! When a massive hurricane hits her Florida town, young Haley ignores the evacuation orders to search for her missing father, Dave. After finding him gravely injured in their family home, the two of them become trapped by the rapidly encroaching floodwaters. With the storm strengthening, Haley and Dave discover an even greater threat than the rising water level, a relentless attack from a pack of gigantic alligators. Guys, I love this fucking movie. Directed directed by Alexander Aja. Um, produced by him and Sam Raimi. So, you, I mean, just the pedigree right there. Bam. You know it's good. Oh, I totally spaced that. It, I totally forgot that it was. What is, what's the name of his company again? Ghost House? Was that, is that his? Yeah. Raimi Productions. Yep. Hmm. Um, yeah. It stars Kaya Scodelario and Barry Pepper. Barry Pepper's Barry back. Pepper. He's back and he's badass. I love him he's in this He's so movie. good in this. And so is she. Yeah, she's awesome too. Well, and they gotta be. They yeah. carry most of this movie. Right. It's it's a it's it's got your one location ish setting that you love so much. And mm-hmm. minimal cast. It's tense as fuck and it's the uh, the gators are terrifying and it's a thrill ride. I kind of use the word. That's right. Ride. I didn't say the whole, yeah, it is. You're um, asking a lot of your actors too to just be like, you know, oh. neck up in water like every day and just wallowing around in mud and just yeah. And you think about that when you watch it, you're like, oh man, these guys were just soaked for fucking weeks on end. That couldn't yeah. be fun to make. I think this is probably close to the third i think the third time i've watched this movie now and i'm convinced that uh now that i'm a bigger germaphobe than i thought i was (laughs) because every time i watch this movie for the first half of the movie i'm just completely fixated on how gross that water in that basement is and how they both have gaping alligator teeth wounds (laughs) that are just getting soaked with like Uh toilet water and god knows what else yeah or when she tries, and when she tries to revive her dad by feeding him water wrung out from her hoodie, I'm just like, that's mm. so gross. That's gross. It's pretty gross. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm on the edge of my seat from beginning to end. It's uh, it's one of my favorite movies that came out last year, and definitely 
um, sure, it's solid. I mean, sure, it's simple, but like it is so solid. I mean, it's just an amazing animal attack movie. I can't recommend it enough. I was wonderfully surprised on how awesome it was and can't say enough. What'd you guys? I, think, I mean, we've talked about it a little bit before on the, like, the year end last year. Yeah. It made our lists, I'm sure. And what I, think I think I might. Is, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say what I think it is. It's like it's a disaster movie that ends up being a animal, an animal attack movie, which is which is, I think, might be sort of a first, I think. With a um, freaking solid story of a daughter and her father, which I yeah, think is, it, it does have up. an amazing like, really? relationship dynamic storyline going on there amongst all of this as well. Yeah. Like, um, the, the situation and like the crocodiles end up becoming like, you know, uh, relationship therapists, like in a way, <laughs> 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 which is weird. Um, uh-huh. uh, it's uh but yeah the 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 gore is is great i mean i think my favorite kill or shot whatever you want to call it in in the movie is that great overhead view of that police officer in you know in the in the raincoat and that whole pack of gators just, just go at him at once oh and yeah pull them apart i'm just like holy shit yeah that's awesome um yeah, I mean, I I don't I really can't say much more about this. I mean, I I mean, how many times can I compliment up this movie? Just how how great it is, and just the the dynamic between you know the father and the daughter, and you know his, you know, basically, I like how he says how he couldn't sell the place, how his memories, you know, it's like it, it's like yeah, it does it, it doesn't even matter anymore. Nothing in the past matters. Everything, you know, the fact that, you know, we're family and nothing's ever going to is is ever going to change that, you know, just put everything behind you because there's something so worse, you know, that can be lurking around the corner. You got to put that shit away. You know, mainly not everybody's going to have to face down, a, you know, a pack of alligators and a hurricane, but uh yeah, it's not really a big, gigantic, you know, family values movie, you know, mind you. But the the B story works really well, and yeah, I can't really compliment this movie enough. I I I really really enjoy this one. It was really great sitting sitting down and watching it again. So that's all I got. I love it because the dog lives. Yes, <laughs> Erica I- would want to know that. <laughs> yes. I was going to bring that up too. I think it's interesting. I feel like after a few weeks ago, we watched those bug movies and, and we watched these movies from the seventies and eighties where right away they kill the animal, which, which I feel like is, was like a, a device back in those days of like these killer bugs or this, whatever, whatever the antagonist of the movie is, is showed killing these animals to like kind of show the, the buildup of the threat of these creatures or what have you. But now I, now I'm seeing, you know, with, with this day and age of like, especially with horror movie fans that would much rather see hundreds of, of um, human beings get slaughtered and killed as opposed to one animal, even getting a paper cut um, Mm -hmm. that I feel like it's cool because now that it feels like they're using the animals now as a device for continued tension in the film. Oh yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot of moments where I'm way more concerned about that dog than I am the two humans. Yeah. Um, there's just a lot of cool moments of like, oh my God, please don't tell me this is the moment the dog gets it. And you're just freaking out and, and it's such a cute little dog and whatnot. So I, I like to see that it's going in that direction when it comes to putting animals in your horror films. Yeah, I love the shot where... She traps the gator in the shower. That's a cool one. That's a cool yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was my top two favorite moments, cheering moments of the movie. That and when the gator, she's got that gun and the gator chomps down on her arm and she just, just shoot, shoot, oh, shoot with that gun awesome. in its mouth. Empty, That's freaking sweet. Empty the clip, man. Yep. Oh, so cool. <laughs> And then you guys could you could hear it when the trailer played. The score is kick ass. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite parts of it too. 
Who does the score? Uh, just as uh, these guys, Max Arouge and Stefan Thumb, No B, uh, just okay. a couple guys. I should look into them more on what else they've done, but I was, I love it. Yeah, I, I really think the effects in this hold up really great too, because the, the this is all, all all the Gators are CGI, but what Aja does is is hides them in the dark throughout the movie. And when we do get to see the Gators, it's 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 great. You really do feel like they're still in that shot with with the actors every single time. Like, yeah. I, yeah. like especially the scene where like she's locked in the bathroom with it and she hides it and locks it in the in the shower. Like, yeah, that Gator looks great. It looks like it's there. Or every time it do, they 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 do bite down on on the two actors, it's like, yeah, I feel every chomp that goes down. Like, and, and that's really hard to do nowadays that I've, I've found. I don't always feel stuff when, when I watch CGI, like monsters or animals attack. But this one, it still packs a punch with it, which I think is, is, is quite exceptional because, yeah, that's hard to do. If, you, if me as an audience member, I don't know or if I know that that gator is not really there, but I'm still feeling that in this moment, in this movie, that it's there with these actors – that's that's a really strong thing to do, and I think that's that's definitely all Haja and his directing in this movie. And I love how the house is like we we, we start in the basement, yep. and we progress to the main level. We go up the stairs, and we end yep. up on the roof. Like we're climbing throughout the movie. It's really gr- a great use of you know having just a single location, having all these levels throughout this this movie. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, they even make it out and make it to the boat, and then they get washed back in, and she's like, oh, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Back in the stupid house. Yeah. And a great Jaws homage with that boat, too, with how just how the boat tips up and she kind of slides into the gator's mouth. It's just like Quint's death and Jaws. Mm, yeah. Yeah, nice. I and mean, then think of that. That's that's true. It's very good. Man, I just yeah, love it. I was going to say, it's also uh, – you know what he was saying about like the CGI shark or CGI gators. It also uh, helps when we're watching it with these other two movies. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that for sure. I was thinking the same thing, but uh, uh, man, I just love Aja so much. Yeah. Like he has yet to disappoint me with a movie. I can't think of a single movie in his filmography that I do not like. And what's great is although, you could probably class them all in to one category, but in my mind, he has tackled all different tones throughout his different movies. Like, you know, Piranha 3D is obviously way more campy and fun and funny and, you know, and, and just in a good old splatter fest where this one, you know, is, is way more of a attention builder, uh, you know, so so I just, and I'm so glad that like, you know, I feel like he's one of the few that keep not only keeps putting out quality films as a director, but is actually still going, you know, I mean, look, if you look at a lot of his other peers from the time when he leaped onto the scene compared to some of the others, it feels like some of them have kind of lost steam or they, they moved on to being one of those, like so-and-so presents this movie, you know, that kind of thing where he's just still in the trenches directing some, some kick-ass films. And what's encouraging is the, the budget was only 13 and a half million. Whoa. That's yeah, pretty low. That's pretty low for what they yeah. got for real. Yeah. Yeah. And the box office was 91 and a half. Nice. So they'll let those two team up yes. every time as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. and Jason, you and I, we saw this in the theater the first time. Oh, yeah. It was so awesome. Mm-hmm. Nice. When theaters used to exist, that was a, <laughs> it's a way to see this movie. Oh. Me too. I saw it in theaters and loved it. Very cool. Very cool. So get out there. Buy it. Yeah, definitely. Everybody. Definitely. It's awesome. So, uh, Andy, what's our next movie? Our next movie is from 2018, coming from Thailand. It is called The Pool. Let 
ตัวเองขอโดดน้ำทีได้ปะอย่าโดดก้อยช่วยดูเราติดอยู่ในสระว่ายน้ำแบบนี้ต่อไปไม่ได้เราต้องหาทางออกนี่นี่นึกนึกคงไม่มีอะไรเลวร้ายไปกว่านี้แล้วไม่มีใครติดอยู่ในสาวให้น้ำจะตายหรอโอเค the pool day an insecure art director of a commercial production company is left alone to clear up a to, to clear up a six meter deep deserted pool after the shooting. He falls asleep on an inflatable raft due to unbearable fatigue. When he wakes up again, the water level has sunk so low that he can't climb out of the pool on his own. He screams for help, but the only thing that hears him is some creature from a nearby crocodile farm. Um. Yes, <laughs> I really, really enjoyed this film. Um, yeah, I, I really did. Um, there's for the very beginning. I mean, it does <laughs> not. It's not screwing around. It 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 doesn't pull any punches from the freaking get go. Because I was just like, you know, I'm accustomed to like you know a slow progression, and I'm sitting in front <laughs> of my computer watching Shutter. You know, and I'm like, oh shit. Um. And yeah, you you knew you know that the shit will eventually uh, hit the fan. Uh, uh, the the male lead is also a di- diabetic, which ups the stakes, which I which I really kind of liked because uh, he can't get to his insulin. Um, all of the really really <laughs> stupid <laughs> decisions aside that led him to this point. <laughs> Um, if you can forgive that, you're you're in for like a really really uh fun movie. I think his girlfriend is a complete moron. Um, who you know who dives into a pool that's like only half full that you know that you're not going to be able to get out of. Um, uh, I just really really think some of the the there's so many this this movie is so heartbreaking. Though, because there's so many light at the end of the tunnel moments, and then your feet just get taken right out from underneath of you. Um, lots of cringy shit. Oh, um, oh, I can't even like watch Like when it. he rips his fingernail <laughs> off trying to climb. That's just. Uh, he's. Uh, I mean, th- he attempts to crawl out of there, but I mean, with a wire that's hanging down. But unfortunately, there's it's barbed wire, so it's just it's ripping the shit out of his hands. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's a B story where he wanted his girlfriend to get into a get in get an abortion. Um, you know, uh, that's really here nor there with me. I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't really care. I mean, it does up the stakes that since his uh, girlfriend is pregnant, um, I mean, he didn't mind having you know the crocodiles, you know, uh. <laughs> <laughs> crocodile abortions when they you know they fried its egg so um yeah i don't want to i don't want to give away uh, uh a, a whole lot uh of course uh i think i should mention this because people will be really really upset uh the dog the the dog does uh jump and hang himself really and that tough. is really it's really, really probably tough to one of the it's, toughest it's animal deaths really, really to really ever bad. see on film because it's it's almost but uh, but he saves him. But, 
I know. It's, it it's almost so feels like so the, it almost feels like the dog's sacrificing exactly. himself. Yeah. In a sense. Exactly. Uh, I mean, that that's what that's that's the beauty of of this whole thing. It's just like the 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 total loyalty that you have, you know, between, you know, an owner, you know, and and a dog and that's what that's what so a dog would probably most likely do for you is, you know, sacrifice yourself, you know, because, you know, you he loves his master so much, but Jesus Christ. Um yeah, um, but a lot, a lot of, a lot of really good, good stuff in there. Um, but you know, I mean, the tape roll <laughs> inside the crocodile's mouth when it's sleeping, and he's got to grab the damn thing. I mean, just really, really tense shit. But yeah, but it's just one more just shitty thing happen. You know, um, after the other, um, yeah. Yeah, I should not like. This well, what did movie. what did you guys? Think? I was gonna I say shouldn't. you it, shouldn't because I know how you are with movies. Everything where that can go wrong, can't catch a break. Everything that can go wrong goes fucking wrong for this dude. Yeah, almo- I mean, almost uh, there's a thousand rug pulls. Almost, and I love this movie. I want to start off by saying that, but almost. Everything going wrong for him, almost to the point of comical. Like it's this is ridiculous. almost like mis- this is almost like Mister Bean goes to the pool. It fucking <laughs> is. It really is, though. It's like how many fucking things can we put in here to just oh so so many almost but almost no nope, no nope, 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 even worse up. now for you and now oh it's ninety minutes of that. 90 minutes of that bullshit. But climbs into the next pool. I love this movie. <laughs> uh, and Tina will probably be pissed that I said that cuz I don't think she liked it that much, but oh man, it's so good. I really I, I, I But I mean you you kind of have to do this. You kind of have to have oh, yeah, like there's all no this crappy list. stuff happening because I mean how right. much can you the squeeze in to just the guy standing pool. around and then in a pool? That's it. Which on the surface alone <laughs> sounds ridiculous. It, it is. But it, for those who haven't seen the movie, bearing in mind, we're talking one of those like ginormous, super deep it's Olympic like type Olymp- pools. Yeah, Olympic yeah. pool. And then you're like, but it makes yeah. you think. Yeah, it's a, di- it's a diving stuff. pool. Like, has this happened before? It makes this you wonder. Be, yeah, this is actually really scary. What if? What if this happened? And for days he's stuck in there, and and I don't know. I'm with him, and 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 so like I know you're gonna probably reference the bad or uh, the worse, the lesser CGI than uh, Crawl had. It's but, unfortunate to be watching this after Crawl. We'll put right, it that way. As far I, as the CGI goes, I made sure not to do that, but. uh but again, at the same time, I'm just like, I'm so into this movie and I'm so, this is where like the low budget, uh, when, it, when the movie is low budget, like it's so e- easy for me to forgive. So like I can just easily watch all those gator scenes with a grain of salt. It's just like, I get the intent, whether it's perfect or not, I don't care because what's happening is still pretty kick ass. It's just not, you know, the best, but. I, I never it never bothers me once there isn't one s- s- second of the gator stuff that bothers me i think like well because i mean we've always st- obviously still seen worse sure again it's not the best cgi um especially compared to crawl but i think and somebody brought this up earlier the advantage crawl has over it is that uh um the alligators are in the dark and in the shadows a lot where yeah. where a lot of the gator scenes in this movie is in broad freaking daylight with nothing to hide mm. behind because they're all just in a empty pool. Yeah, and it makes you just like how w- how would you get out if this guy can't get out? How would you get out? But I also want to say too that I feel like the actions of the gator. This is maybe a little bold and dumb for me to say, but the actions of the gator feel a little bit more realistic to me than maybe crawl. Because like, sure. Cause like sometimes how many he's times, just like, I'm going to sit over here for a while. Yeah. And gators do Fuck that. You. you could probably, <laughs> you could probably have a 50% chance of, of walking through, walking through a gator farm without getting, getting attacked at all. Where sure. crawl, it's like, oh, you're in the near vicinity of a gator. You're going to get attacked. Um, so there's like moments of this where the gator's just chilling out, just hanging. Yeah. And right. I feel, could, that feels a little probably, more realistic. 
Yeah, you could probably just stand in the opposite corner of the yeah. gator and like have one person watch, one person sleep, and you'd probably live if you weren't trying to get out of there. You know, like if yeah. you knew something, if you just knew There's like coming, right? right yeah, yeah, but um, that's what's great about it is it sort of you know has so many stakes. Like they had to add the um, diabetic part because that gives him a reason that he has to get out now. Then the pregnancy, then all. Yeah, like all that stuff, you know, adds adds to Time the lock. intensity of it. True. I mean, Gators got to sleep too, True. right? You know, I mean, they're not. I really like the, the, the parental stuff in this. Like we we mentioned that the the Gator, you know, lays eggs, and that's what they use to to feed themselves. And we have a, a pregnancy in this movie. I do like that. There's a, a change of heart for him where they do end up eating the gator's eggs to survive, but then he goes into a full survivor's instinct too to protect his own kid later in the movie. It's a nice little like change of heart that he has in, in this movie. And like, it gives him a great little character arc in, in the second half mm-hmm. that he goes from, you know, wanting his, his girlfriend to have this abortion. And by the end of the movie, he does want to have the kid and, and be a dad that, can be there for them. And I mean, this is definitely the first start to, of that path for, for him, you know, surviving in a, in a pool for a week with, with the gator who's, who's pissed off that they ate his eggs. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing I, that I think that's the thing I most enjoyed out of this movie is that it had a nice little like parental aspect to it inside this, you know, monster movie with, with the gator in it. And it, this also, it reminded me of saw a lot that it's it's saw in the bottom of a pool. <laughs> Instead of carry always, we we get a gator. Nice. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> yeah, uh, I like, like that that there was again, again they, they use like the house and crawl. They use every aspect of the house. Here they use every aspect of the pool. Like and they the use very the diving. few things that are in there. Yeah. 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 They use every single aspect the of drainage. it. And, and yeah, it to its fullest effect. And for me, the CGI is just like, it's just like, oh, it's unfortunate that it's yeah. <laughs> not good. You wish it was better because the rest of the movie yeah. is really great. And I, I, there, I, I wish they wouldn't have started on the bad CGI because it right away it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. But you get over that really quickly once you get into the situation, you get into the characters. And you kind of forget about the CGI later on in the movie. Uh, and I think that's just a big part of, like, you're just in not necessarily enjoying, but you're with these characters in this journey in the, in the bottom of the pool. You don't really care that the CGI is, you know, lackluster. Yeah. I saw a trailer for this on Facebook, like <laughs> maybe last year. I don't remember. It was last year, or the year before. And I stopped and watched it and it was being promoted from mid- the midnight pulp ad. They had it like right when it came yeah. out. Yep. And so I downloaded the app just to watch this movie, watched it. And I messaged you guys and I was like, dude, yeah, dude, you have to watch this. It's, it's, it's something else, man. Like I, I explained it to you guys and you're like, yeah, that sounds completely dumb. Let's watch it. So uh, <laughs> stuck in pool. Uh, it was, it was your recommendation that made you run, <laughs> run out and watch it right away. Yeah. yeah I'm glad that, you know, <laughs> Shutter picked it up. Well done, yeah, you know, obviously, well obviously uh, Midnight Pulp is great, but it's not going to, it doesn't have the audience. The Shutter does because they just hit what like one million subscribers or something. So you're welcome, yep, Shutter. You're welcome, Shutter. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. and uh, so now it's gonna have a. Whole, I feel like it's gonna have like not necessarily a cult following, but it's gonna be one of those ones that people slowly start seeing and they'll yeah. talk about like, dude, have you seen the pool? It's so ridiculous, but it's it's something engaging about it. Like it's a, it shouldn't be as engaging as it is. It's a really bad gator and a and a dude stuck in a pool, but something about it, it's like. Like you said, every situation he gets himself into, you care about him and you want to want him out of there. And there's times when I even feel for the gator. It's like yeah. they don't want to be stuck in here together. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it, when that gator walks in and he's like walking a dog's barking, barking and the gator falls in the pool. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Uh-huh. And, and he like he like dips under and he's looking for it. And I'm like, one, I would never be in that pool because I don't humans aren't meant to swim like we go underwater we die so to me huh. i'm not a, i'm not a swimmer i don't like getting wet you and um I. weird yep. yeah i we're, we're not if we were meant to swim we would have gills <laughs> like l- leave us out of the water you know every time we're in the water we're asking for it so um fair. Fair. i yeah 
Yeah, but you yeah, fly. and I don't like it, but I have to, to get somewhere. Though. It's a convenience. Um, I know every time I'm risking something, you know, not necessarily a gator bite, but you know, going down. Um, yeah. But it's like every, like you said, every situation he gets himself into, it's like it's it's more and more ridiculous. But um, I I just know, like watching it, you know, Jason was saying, like, how would I get out? What would I do? Um, I watch it. And I'm like. Yeah, I'd be dead like first 10 minutes. I wouldn't even try to like get out. I'd be like, well, I I guess I'm just going to like wait here and hope someone shows up. And if not, I'm going to starve to death or die from dehydration or the gator's going to get me, whatever. You know, I'd probably try to kill myself before the gator could do it because I'm too scared of the gator. But um, <laughs> but it's like, you know, he's a he's a real fighter. And every like you said, ev- even when he finally gets the uh, what's the insulin, like he drops that and shatters. It's like. Jesus, can this guy yeah. catch a fucking break? Like Every, you can't even catch the insulin break. Yeah, everything man. that can go wrong goes wrong, and that's where it, it almost gets to the level oh, of it's... comical. Where because he does have this like survival instinct where he's trying so hard to survive, and he's doing some pretty crafty stuff, like using using his glasses and the rope from his the rope from his robe as like a a grappling hook to get his phone. Yeah. Like he's doing some pretty smart stuff that the rest of us probably wouldn't think to do yet. It just keeps ending worse and worse for him every time he tries to do these things. And like the biggest moment for me where I didn't know whether to laugh, get pissed or was just like getting all tensed up was that moment when he is stuffing the, um, stuffing the robe in the drain to slow down the drainage and the Pizza Hut guy shows up, dropping off yeah, the pizza, uh, and his freaking chain wallet gets stuck. First of all, uh, you know, the perfect reason, reason 107, why not to have a freaking chain wallet? <laughs> Calling it. <laughs> saying, putting it out there. Get rid of them things. Um, but his freaking chain wallet gets stuck in the freaking drain. And so not only is it like salvation is just feet, you know, uh, several feet away at the top of the water because the Pizza Hut guy's there looking for him. But now he's practically drowning to death because he can't get free of the freaking drain because his stupid keychain, his stupid wallet chain is stuck in the drain. It's 90 then, minutes of that. I was like, yeah, then he gets out and the, he can't hear him over the moped that the pizza driver uh, is riding. Conveniently starts the moped right at the moment he starts screaming for help again. It makes me think of that scene in Halloween 2 that always gets me when Loomis and the sheriff are walking into the hospital looking for Lori and she's right in the parking lot, slowly crawling towards them. And as soon as the door to the hospital closes, she yells, she finally gets the breath to yell help. And it always yeah. kills me watching oh. it because it's like so tense. It's like she's right there, right behind you. Scream, scream. And she finally gets the breath and the door closes right as she's screaming. They miss it, you know. It's the same type of thing where it's like he finally gets to the surface of the water and the moped starts and it's like, fuck. And, you know, we knew that what it, it wouldn't be a movie if, you know, he yeah. got to the top and the Pizza Hut guy was like, cool, let me get you out of there. Or, uh, you know, even when the drone lands in the pool uh, and those guys bring the ladder down and it's like every <laughs> uh, little thing just they're just fucking oh, like it feels like the director is ends. just fucking with us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you see, he's relishing in the moment, or you you might even want to address. You literally have a light at the end of the tunnel yep. moment where he's going up through this other drain, and there's light. <laughs> and he gets up and, and he's over in the That's next like a pool, Twilight Zone episode where he steps on the glasses, you know, and he has yeah. all the books and he can't read. It's the same thing. Yeah, he finally gets out oh, of the drain, and exactly. it's another pool. It's so cruel. <laughs> I forgot about the ladder and how he almost gets to the stupid ladder, and then the, I forget what happened. Something falls, which drags the uh, the chain of the ladder, pulls the ladder out of. I'm like, come on, come on! <laughs> the movie ends 47 times. This should have been no. Every moment he should have just thrown his arms in the air uh, and be like, oh, come on! Like he died at least four <laughs> times, but then didn't, and she died 17 times, and uh, I was. I was just gonna hold my hand up. He, he, ha- like, he, he had his badass moment, on, like man. when she trapped the uh, gator in the in the shower. He does that, like slide into the drain and closes yeah. the lid right as he's sliding in. It's like such an unrealistic like right. action movie <laughs> move, but I love it. It's yeah. like 
so perfect for this movie. He just does the running slide and in one motion somehow gets a manhole covered, kaboom, you know, closes <laughs> and like, right, right out through the gator's jaws. Just so cool. Man, I'm so glad everybody digs this movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I loved it. I'm so, I was so happy I got it. You guys talk about like the cringeworthy stuff really with like the, the fingernail or even like uh, the dog uh, jumping man, in. Yeah, the, I had to watch the fingernail stuff like with my hands over my eyes. I, oh, I don't know. I couldn't do it. Stuff. Yeah. It makes me but cringe. Even, you're bringing it up. Yeah. Even when, when his girlfriend shows up and she's trying to like sneak into the pool and, and dive off and he oh. yells and she just smacks her head on the back of my car. Oh, that's <laughs> rough. Yeah. That is always a fear of mine, like going off a diving board. Like, what if I yep. slip and just smack my head and fall in? What's going to happen? Oh, oh yeah. There's a there's a lot oh, of just, Greg like, just send shivers up your arms because of the, the <laughs> gore in this. And that's a I don't get that way very often. But this movie had at least two or three. We're like, ugh, heebie jeebies. Definitely. I I think the nail part was worse than like yeah, having him yeah. like when he broke his leg. It's yeah. just like oh my god. <laughs> and then he and then he, and then he pulled the rest out of it. Nails and teeth are Jesus always two Christ. things that get me. So. Yep, Yikes. me too. Me too. Uh, ah, nails. The pool. Um. Oh, oh gosh. Like I I just I wish the movie would go on a little bit longer because I want to know. <laughs> What? You want to <laughs> see how much more you can torture this guy? No, I, I just want to know. I just want to know his friends yeah, and family's reaction when they see him and her, and they're like, "What happened to you?" And his answer is, "Oh, I got trapped in a pool." Like they look like they just got done having dinner at the Sawyer's house at the Texas Chancellor Massacre house, but yet all they were was stuck in a pool for three, three or four days. Yeah, six or seven with or, a goddamn gator. With a gator, but yeah. I was, I was just rappelling out of a pool uh, with stop the help of my dead that. dog. No problem. Yeah. So, not to be a a bummer, but sorry. How, how did you deal with it, Tad? Oh, uh, this is the second time seeing it, so I knew when it was coming. So I left the room. Yeah. The first time I watched it, I was like so, so thankful that Nikki wasn't yeah. watching with me because yeah, we probably still wouldn't be talking. But it's impactful, very powerful. Yeah, big time. It's man. a punch uh, in the uh, stomach, you man. know. It's, not that it should ever hard. happen, I guess, it's but like at least it was. Yeah, it was used as a device, right? not just to yeah. kill the dog. It, it yeah. served a purpose for the story. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. man, I want that dog. The dog reminded me of uh, was yeah. it Einstein that, and uh, that, yeah, what was, what was the other one's name? P- 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 uh, what was it later in the other movies? He, he had a different yeah. dog, yeah. Pater- Paternicus. So, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. It was a gorgeous dog. Mm-hmm. You don't see many of those anymore. They were like big in the eighties for some reason. Like that was the dog in the eighties movies. It was like the scruffy one with the hair over his eyes, and now you know yeah. it's more like golden retrievers. But Shaggy Da, that's what brought that into <laughs> that dog into popularity. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so the pool, highly recommended. And as it was mentioned earlier, it's on Shudder. Check it out. Pad, what's what's our third movie tonight? What will that be? We save the worst for last. What? The 1979 The Great Alligator. Crocodile do this? Not even the biggest one in the river. On that point, maybe the Kumas. No more than we do. The Kuma tribe. Tourism can only improve their standard of living. Good, peaceful folk. I think he's sending us away. He says the great god of the river has been aroused and is punishing the Kuma for having contact with us. There's no danger inside the nets, is there? No, no, absolutely not. Have you 
seen the great god? Many have seen. White man as well. You talk to him, then go. I will take you. He's called Father Jonathan. Was it a crocodile? He's not an animal. He's a demon. In that river, there is something enormous, and you have to warn the tourists about the danger. If there were something enormous out there, you're still perfectly safe on dry land. He's a demon! He's a demon! He's a demon! Okay, the Great Alligator, a tourist resort in Africa finds itself at the mercy of a huge man-eating crocodile from a local native legend, which the croc is the incarnation of a native god angered by the intrusion of the tourist on its nesting ground. So, um... He's a I don't know how, He's a demon! Yeah, I don't know how else to describe it other than that great description written on Amazon Prime, which is where you can watch it. Um, <laughs> came out in 1979, directed by Sergio Martino. This one is quite a bit different from the other two. Uh, we got a nice variety. <laughs> we got a nice variety. I mean, if we we're complaining about the CGI on the last movie, uh, no, there's no bad CGI in this one. No, there's no bad CGI at all in this one. We'll go with that. Um, <laughs> it's calling it the great alligator is a bit misleading. Um, it's the not so great alligator. Well, uh, and it's it's like troll 2 like troll 2 they weren't there was no trolls in that movie they were goblins <laughs> this is the yeah. great alligator it wasn't an alligator it was a crocodile yeah they, so we're gonna hear me say crocodile crocodile over and over and over again in the movie right and we're gonna hear about it from brian i don't even though he already right. listed this one spoiler alert and shout outs um he's i don't know I don't know. What did you guys think? I don't even know what to say about this one. I had a, I had a hard time even staying. I'll be honest. I had a hard time staying awake for it. Um, maybe I need to give it another shot, but I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> well, I, I can say that we watched two really good movies and the other one had the balls to actually have the word great in it. So I'm with, I'm with you. On there. Um, it's, uh, Jesus. Yeah, I'm uh, dying to hear your your um, review of this, Andy, after you posted that you said that this was almost as bad as Clounter Guys. Wow. He did. Uh, that's, that's oh, the only redeeming quality it, in this movie whatsoever is Barbara Box looks. Ringo Starr is a lucky guy. Um, hell, where, where do it, you know, where do we start? I mean, it's just like, <sighs> oh damn it! I'm tired. Um, it's Italian, therefore it's uh, already got uh, bonus points, right? <laughs> right, uh, guys. Just mean? Does that mean it's just dub bad or? What? No. <laughs> I mean, it, it is that it automatically has a charm to it, right? Just like rats, night of terror. That's not true. Um, yeah, this um. <laughs> I I don't understand why it's called Paradise House. How the hell is that going to draw tourism whatsoever? They'd have better they'd, <laughs> they'd have a better chance calling it Waffle House. I mean, it just it doesn't make any fucking sense. I do want to know. It's just uh, Paradise House. That's like the worst I name I've know the ever budget fucking for heard. Paradise House Resort when like all of their logos. And all other signs, like on the boats and stuff, look like they were drawn on with puffy paint. 
<laughs> yeah. And like every every time they cut to an animal, it just looked like, you know, archival footage from like, you know, National Geographic, you know, like really, really, really close up. You know, ooh, here's a snake. Ooh, here's an orangutan. Ooh. You know, um ooh. Just, ooh. it's <laughs> <sighs> Come on, Andy. <laughs> and just a bunch of drunk people with weapons and dynamite, and that's always a really bright idea. I think we broke um, Andy. Oh, something. Yeah, I, happened. I think I would <laughs> rather pull one of my fucking fingernails out. Like you know, you'd rather be stuck in a pool with a again. CGI gator than watch the Great Alligator again. Yes, yes, yes. I could put it this way: you know, you don't like shock treatments and lobotomies. <laughs> I mean, just like I think uh, this. <laughs> movie is about as enjoyable as a goddamn lobotomy. So, yeah. uh yeah. That that that's what I that's what I, that's my opinion. I I'm, I'm through talking about it. I had a blast with this movie. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> if, if there needs there uh, needs <laughs> no, I, I yeah, totally get it. This is I'm an asshole. Candy, but... This is a terrible movie, but uh it, it's Jurassic Park with gators, guys. Uh <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh yeah, I, I I unabashedly like like uh Jason said, if it's Italian, you already get a, a star point in my eyes. Uh you add a gator, that's another star point. So you're you're almost halfway there and already. And uh yeah, this is bad in every every sense of the, of the word, but I, I had a blast watching this one. Uh, the, the 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 gigantic gator fight at the at the end with all the the people in the water like this for some reason uh, like I, I do like the 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 stuff with with the the like the resort and how it's like just beginning to open and much like Jaws or Jurassic Park someone especially Jaws the mayor is like oh it's fine whatever let them swim anyway the guy who owns the resorts is the exact same character in this. So I think Spielberg is a, is a big fan of the Great Gator and, and stole a lot of things from this movie. Uh, especially for, for for Jurassic Park. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm totally kidding. He definitely did not. But uh, I, I think this is a lot of fun. It's definitely not as good as Crawl or The Pool. But if, if like, uh, the last Italian movie I watched was Cannibal Ferox. So this is uh, definitely a step up. <laughs> yeah. I, I do have a question why the hell is uh bootleg parent trap fucking Lindsay Lohan even doing in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> what, why is she there? Explain that to me. She's never in any in, in any danger at all, really, and she's just there to be a little shit. I I don't get it. And her what the hell was her weird damn name anyway? I forget, and I wish I would have wrote it down because I feel like her whole purpose was that amazing line she had right at the very end of the movie. But I don't remember what the line was. It was it was god awful. But oh man, damn it! I should have wrote it. Down. Yeah, I re- I don't know what the line is, but it, I remember after watching, I'm like, that just doesn't make any sense for for the last line of the movie. Exactly. <laughs> it's, a, it's like one of the greatest last lines in cinema history. Yeah. Is it so bad? I like how she is just kind of, she's just kind of in this movie where like. All the exactly. adults, just, all the adult adults around her, just want to bang, and they're like, "Fucking kid is here again." All right, your turn to watch this damn kid. We want to go bang next to the alligators. That's what all the adults want to do, and no one wants to deal with this little redheaded kid. Yeah, I, I'm somewhere in between you two. It's, I, I'm trying to. I feel like I've seen it before, actually, but. Because I remember a lot of the the gator stuff, especially the the super gator at the end. Uh, and you know they tried, they tried. <laughs> I don't know if they tried hard, but they tried. You know, they trying to do something. It, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, it's all right. I. Oh, you love it. I, I love this do. movie. I do. Because it's bad. Because it's bad. And that that's the reason why I do love it. Now, as far as my love of bad cinema goes, this one, it may be a little further down on the list because it does drag on in spots. You know, it takes like, I think, what is it? Like 30 minutes before we even get our first 
first uh, alligator or crocodile attack, right? So, but the thing is, is like during all this like pointless dialogue nonsense that's going on through the majority of this movie, at least it's the most bizarre, bizarre written dialogue and weirdest delivery dialogue I've ever freaking heard or seen. Like the these are these are children talking. The, there is a small five year old children wrote the dialogue for this movie. I'm convinced because no human being talks like this. And again, I wish I would have wrote some of this down, but because it's just, it's so bizarre. Just straight from the top of this movie in the airplane, they're talking gibberish and it's glorious. (laughs) What's what's the deal with fucking captain caveman standing on top of the waterfall. And he just announces his day. I am Jonathan. And he just takes off and just just runs away. (laughs) why the? Why was he even in the damn movie? You talking about some? You know, we we have a big crocodile. No shit, we learned that on the island. So why are you even here? Because okay, the, it ate your missionaries. Who gives a shit? That that serves no. That serves nothing. Ugh, I, I'm I'm getting angry. <laughs> but and. If you're like me and you love bad cinema, and even if you you know you find these moments I boring, do, but uh. <laughs> and you find a lot of this, a lot of these, some of these moments dragging on and boring, and they're not entertained by the bad dialogue like I am, I feel like it's it's really worth it when it gets to the crocodile effects because they are so bad and they try so hard to hide it. They try. overcompensate in the editing to try to to hide. That it's the like this cardboard yeah. jaws, alligator, crocodile jaws, and chomping on people. Has and this been awesome. riff tracked before? It feels like it should have been. <laughs> like it feels like this I, would be a riff tracks movie if it, they have we, not we done should it. Do like an attack. We should do like an attack track on this thing or something. You oh, know? we we should. Yeah, I wonder if it is public domain. We'll have to look into that. This could be a great one for one of our. I can rip it a new asshole. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sweet. But I also I'm a I'm a fan of Sergio Martino and and, and guys he can make good movies. So you know, calm down. Um, like Slaves of the Cannibal Slave of the Cannibal Gods is really good. Uh, he did some great Jalo films like Your Vice is a Locked Room and I'll, Only I Have the Key. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's probably most famously known for around these parts as the guy as the director of. Poor soul. Poor soul. Oh God, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Um, Poor but, but Andy, I'm surprised you didn't bring this up. This movie is also featured in that documentary, Fifty Worst Movies oh, of yes. All Time. Yeah. I was going to rewatch that too to see where it ranked. I couldn't remember where it ranked, but I I didn't have time. I think it might have been within the top twenty. It was in the. It, 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 it wasn't. <laughs> it was above the halfway mark. So. I think I remember like the the number one was it was like this insanely long title like the strange the incredibly strange creatures who thing stopped that was number one. mixed up zombies yeah yes that was number one yeah I thought oh. usually they say Manos the hands of fate is like a really just Manos really didn't bad even movie. make this didn't even make that documentary and I wonder if like the documentary was made before. Um, before Manos became some, um, became infamous thanks to Mystery Science Theater 3000. It was only 36. Oh, Great Alligator was 36. Yeah, Jason pulled up a, really? a whole oh, list okay. here. My bad. Yeah. But it's on um, there. And I don't think there is a movie on the top 50 that I do not love. I mean, I think I love all of them. Ugh. Um. I mean, I don't usually rag on bad films this much because, I mean, I do love me some Ed Wood. I do love, like, you know, some pretty crappy movies. So, but this one just did not <laughs> it was rough. do it. Do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Man, it's okay. It's an acquired taste. We'll put it that way. <laughs> but I'm glad I wasn't the only one. Too. So thanks, Casey, for being a, <laughs> being on my team on this. <laughs> I had a good time with it. Awesome, good deal. All right, so that concludes the films for this episode. But do not worry, there's still more Attack of the Killer podcast to come. 
We're going to take a quick break so you can hear all about our very own podcast network called the Prescribed Films Podcast Network or, or the PFPN. Uh, and also so I can go poop. Um, oh. But uh, the PFPN has so many great shows on the network. So check them out at thepfpn.com. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal, providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. We are back, and it is time for one of our favorite segments here at Attack of the Killer Podcast. Here's Jason with shout outs. It's time for shout outs. Shout outs. Shout outs. Shout outs. Shout outs. All right, we just asked, what are your favorite Gator movies? And on Facebook, right up first, Brian Clark. <laughs> Couldn't wait. Antonio Margarides, the great alligator. Yeah. Killer crocodile one and two. And of course, John Sales Alligator. Yeah, which I, I love. I, I love, love that movie. Yeah. I, I I so wanted to put it on the list, but it, it I don't know. It felt a little cliche, or maybe we've talked Too about easy. it. Yeah. Yeah. I never have seen the killer crocodiles. I don't know if I have seen those either. Cool. All right. And then up next we got Nick Leadham. He says, I know it doesn't count as a gator, but Robocroc. Oh, I haven't seen that either, but I'm intrigued. Nice. Yeah, it's. Um, Can we do a croc one next? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think Robocroc is the one that Rift Tracks did, and not this one. Crockpot Massacre. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you need to make that film. Uh, then we got yes. uh, Tim Lennerer. He says alligator because it had John Sayles script. Robert Forster wrote the dialogue, making fun of his hair loss. And for yeah. that amazing shot of the two cops in the sewer, not noticing the reptile crawling around behind them because they're paying attention to the map. They're trying to read. That's a pretty good scene. Then we got Don and Nelly. He says killer crocodile one and two. The Lake Placid sequels are a lot better than expected, and oh, I have a lot nice. of fun with Robocroc. Damn it, I need to see this Robocroc. Right. We'll have gotten to Blackwater Abyss by the time this episode airs, but not at the time of posting this message, unfortunately. Blackwater Abyss. I don't know that one either. Uh, J.R. McCullough says Rogue. Yeah, Rogue's good. Yeah, that was one of those. Uh, they did that. That did that direct to DVD series. Like, oh, that was all a bunch of different killer animal movies. I hmm. forget what the name of that series was called. And then Brian Clark's back. He says, oh, "How'd I forget <laughs> about Rogue?" <laughs> and he says, "Also, Primeval, the killer crocodile movie that flopped because it was promoted as a slasher flick and alienated its audience." Primeval. That's an alligator movie, huh? And next we got the Reebster, Mike Reeb. Hey, Reebster. He says, this is a subject very near and dear to me. Uh-huh. <laughs> alligator is one of my top five all-time favorite movies. Nice. Seen it many times growing up on late night TV during the summers. Crawl is friggin' awesome. Damn straight. And as a curveball. I'm throwing in Romancing the Stone. Oh. The, the crocodile oh. scenes were great. Look at those snappers, will you? <laughs> <laughs> and you're farting around with prehistoric animals. <laughs> <laughs> hey, DeVito in the house. Yeah, he's here. He might be later. Who knows? Uh, then we got, uh, lastly on Facebook, um, Heck Johnson. Uh, I, ho- I want that to be your real first name. What the heck? 
It, Johnson, that's right. And it, I'm just Who's assuming heck? this is a picture of his house. <laughs> He's got a little toy alligator um, uh, snapping at the screen of the CRT TV of alligator. Yes, it's very great. That is an amazing picture. I'm trying to look at all the other things. In yeah. the, anyway, so that's on our Facebook page. Uh, nobody in the Facebook group. Um, and then over nothing on Instagram either, but on um, Twitter, we had a few things. We got Brian Godsell. He says, attacker Brian, that is. He says, I have to go with Eaton Alive with a young Robert England and directed by Toby Hoopa. My name is Buck and I like to. Hey, and next we have Slothula at Slothrop. <laughs> 420. I love it. Slothula. He said that person says Death Trap, Horror Hotel, Starlight Slaughter, or The Devil's Swamp. And then he also put a picture of Eaten Alive. I've never heard of any of those except for Eaten Alive. <laughs> <laughs> those almost sound like they're alternate titles to Eaten Alive. Well, maybe it was. But wait, mm. read, the the again. read the Death list again. Death Trap, Horror See? Hotel, okay. Starlight Slaughter. Okay, yeah, the first two I, I've heard of, but yeah. I didn't realize they were alligator movies. Okay, yeah. whatever. All right, and then so um, our attacker, Brian, he uh, forwarded the thing, uh, the tweet, retweeted it, and we, he had a bunch of people on his list, too, so I just thought I'd read them also. Um, we have Mr. Satan at Mr. Satan! Galaxy Enema says, the Burt Reynolds Gator one, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called Gator. Yeah. Yes, um, yeah. JT. At underscore wild misfit underscore says, I love ye Lake Placid, though I just watched Dark Waters, Abyss, and it scared the fuck out of me. Dark Waters, Abyss. See that? Yeah. Yeah. If it scared JT, then look out. And then lastly, over here, we got. Creepier cash at creepy underscore cash, and it's a poster of alligator. I Gosh, love that poster. That's yeah. a cool poster. I would love to have that poster. Yeah. I do have maybe an honorable mention because I feel like it probably does have a gator kill in it. Uh-huh. Uh, but I've been always been wanting to, I've always wanted to see it, but that's a uh, gator bait with uh, Claudia Jennings. <laughs> oh yeah yeah i've never seen it either but you would assume there's gotta be some gator action. yeah exactly right guys guess what two episodes in a row <gasps> we got a voicemail let's listen Woo! this is shooky ball sack from the garbage pale flicks podcast you guys are talking gators i got one for you called eating alive eating alive was made in 1976 and it was robert england's first major film. Yeah, Freddy Krueger was in the Gator movie about the infamous serial killer, Joe Ball. Same director, Toby Hooper, who brought you the edge of your seat, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Poltergeist. Poltergeist <laughs> now brings you the bizarre and bloody eat em up featuring a swamp full of famished crocodiles and a sex-crazed homicidal maniac. This movie is not to be watched alone. Or seen alone. That movie is eaten alive from the seventies. Toby Hooper of Texas Chainsaw Massacre fame. Don't forget to listen to my podcast, the Garbage Pail Flicks podcast, each month on Spotify, SoundCloud, Amazon Music, Podbean, all that good stuff. Tune in and tune out. Peace out. Hey, thanks, Chucky. That's yeah. Chucky at Garbage Pail Flicks podcast. You need to... Another great vote for Eating Alive. Oh, man. With some little, mm. little trivia in there, too. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. You, too, can leave comments everywhere we uh, have the social medias. You can also give us a call and leave a voicemail like Chucky did at 415-952-6857 or 415-95-AOTKP. And that's shout outs. He, his podcast. The name of his podcast is so cool. I have to listen to it now. Yeah, Garbage Pail Flicks. That sounds awesome. F-L-I-X. That's mm-hmm. amazing. You know what else is amazing? 
Well, a- actually, I want to throw my honorable mention out there. I'm oh. so disappointed in the community that no one brought up alligator people. And that's where I put the, the alligator sound people. In and- <laughs> it's a good movie. <laughs> it's it? got Lon Chaney Jr. in it. You just said how much you loved the 50 worst films of all time. And so your credibility, <laughs> pal, is out the window. It may be on that list. I don't remember. Well, speaking of your bad takes, movie takes, let's get into it. We got another celebrity <gasps> guest here to introduce. Here we go. Hey, how you doing? This is uh, Dick Miller for Attack of the Killer Podcast. <laughs> you may remember me from uh, from the Corman Pictures, uh, Bucket of Blood, where I play, uh, played um, uh, Walter Paisley. Uh, perhaps you might have seen me in uh, Gremlins as Marty Futterman, the guy who drove the Kentucky Harvester. Never gave me a day's trouble. And some people may even know me from, you know, the burbs, where I had to tell Corey Feldman to shut the fuck up. It's a, it's, it, it's kind of rumored that, you know, he had a bit of a problem back then, but uh, probably wasn't the first time somebody told him to shut the fuck up. Definitely wasn't the last. And just from me to you, Feldman, shut the fuck up so we can hear and say much dicks. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. From the grave there, Dick Miller. Yeah. All right, doing something a little different. I am going to be doing a newer film uh, documentary, actually, but it's still fitting to Insane's Picks because it's a documentary about an amazing filmmaker whose catalog of movies definitely belongs in the bowels of Insane's Picks. I'm talking about the documentary uh, Blood and Flesh, The Real Life and Ghastly Death of Al Adamson. This documentary about B movie indie horror f- or indie filmmaker Al Adamson. Uh, it's a great documentary that covers his life, his filmmaking career, and his crazy, insane death. Uh, it is one part making movies documentary, one part retrospect about a filmmaker, and one part true crime documentary. So, kind of like all the all my favorite types of documentaries all rolled into one. Uh, Al's real life was even crazier than one of his 30 plus uh, schlock fil- drive in movies that he made in the 60s and the 70s, with such great titles as Satan Sadist, uh, Dracula versus Frankenstein, uh, just so many more. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it uh, it covers everything from how like a blood of ghastly horror was shot three different times, each with three different stories, then shelved, and then finally released after the success of Satan Sadists. Uh, it also covers the controversial UFO documentary that he made and was never released for mysterious reasons, and even his covers his relationships with great people like Sam uh, Sam Sherman and Russ Taublin. Uh, The film has it all concerning Al Adamson, including the details about who, uh, about his, uh, how how he was murdered and cemented into the floor of his own home. Wow. Yeah. Uh, It's it's pretty pretty nuts. Um, The film is directed by David Gregory who uh, probably most famous documentary he's done is what he did. The lost souls uh, doom journey of Richard Stanley's Island of Dr. Moreau. So good. Um, But he has done, uh, David has done tons and tons of special features for like Blu-rays and DVDs. Uh, He has directed like 200 and some special features uh, for, for various uh, horror movies and, and cult films released on, on different formats. Um, this documentary was so much fun. It was so great. Again, I am an Al Adamson's fan. So it was great getting a lot more detail that I was even unaware of, uh, unaware of um, uh, how like uh, all of his films, every single film was catered by Kentucky fried chicken to the point where <laughs> even some of the actors interviewed for this documentary today still can't eat Kentucky fried chicken. Um, to the point where they even got Colonel Sanders to appear in one of his movies. So, uh, totally awesome, amazing stuff. His relationship with, um, John Carradine and all these great classic actors that nobody was hiring at the time. 
a lot of great talking heads in there, like Fred Olin Ray, who obviously um, had to have been highly influenced uh, by Al Adamson. Um, and this movie always, to me, the mark of a good documentary about a filmmaker or or a documentary about films is that it inspires me to you know get off my butt and make my next film, which this movie does. But it also has inspired me in another way where. I'm going to announce it here right now. Insane's picks is going to be um, is going to be a little different here for a little while. So mm-hmm. over the next few episodes, I'm going to be doing the Insane's picks Hall of Fame, where each episode is going to be dedicated to a a um, director or an actor or some name that I feel like belongs in the Hall of Fame of what would be considered an insane's pick, a drive-in classic, a, a schlock film, a B-movie, B Z-grade movie, or uh, some kind of grindhouse film. Any, any, any um, people who worked in those type of films are going to be up for the Hall of Fame. So be on the lookout for that in upcoming episodes. But in the meantime, check it out. It is actually on Tubi right now. Uh, definitely check out Blood and Flesh, The Real Life and Ghastly Death of Al Adamson. And that's it. Oh, my gosh. That's the episode. Gatorific. It is Gatorific. So I want to thank everybody out there for listening. And, again, special thanks to Casey for being on the show. Casey! Yeah, thank you guys so much. This was a this was a blast doing some some gator talk. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, I I am very much not uh, an expert on the gator genre, and I'm glad I uh, dipped dipped my toe in the water. If, if, if <laughs> I will, <laughs> yeah, good one, nice. Uh, nice. Uh, <laughs> well, tell everybody where yeah. uh, they can find you online. Oh, they can uh, they can find uh, Backlot Six Hundred Five and everything we do. Uh, we're on all the social medias: Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just Backlot Six Hundred Five. Uh, you can check us out on backlot605.com and subscribe to us on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, YouTube, on all the major podcast uh, streaming sites. And uh, like, like I said bef- before, uh, we're doing a countdown of the best 80s horror movies. That is the final episode of our Killer Countdown Horror Podcast. Uh, it won't be the last horror podcast that we, we do. Uh, the entire month of October, we're doing Clive Barker movies. Mm-hmm. And the Killer Countdown is forming into its uh, very own new format, uh, if you will, uh, by the name of Slash Lot 605. Ooh. So it'll basically be our horror version of our main show. We'll be talking horror all the time. We wanted to take the pressure off trying to do <laughs> countdowns every <laughs> single month and having to pit our favorite horror movies against each other. So we're going to kill each, kill each other doing 80s movies and then be done with it. So, nice. yeah, again, backlot605.com is where you can find all of our stuff that we're doing there outstanding yeah definitely everybody check that out uh thanks again casey for being on uh thanks again everybody out there for listening and until next time see you later alligator after a while motherfucker oh no could this be the end of Boom, 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 boom. Join, join the attackers today. Hip, 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 hooray. Join, join the attackers today. Yes, you, Sally, you, Bob, and you also, Ray. It won't cost you a whole lot of booty, but it is your American duty Join, join the attackers today. You better do what a freak could say. Join the attackers.com. <laughs>